Hi, I'm Dan. I welcome to UFRS Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be going over basic shading techniques with an airbrush. I'm going to hit some of the really basic aspects of what you're going to need to know in order to get started with really good, consistent shading. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. Consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. A couple of comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Thumbs up will be great. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. Head on over to the channel. Check out that new store tab we got. As you can see, I'm kind of sporting some new merch we got up there for the store. Not only do we have the team logos up there, but we have a couple of really cool other interesting products. All kinds of products with different things on it. You can see one right here on this t-shirt. You got the airbrush garage skull. Got mugs over there, all kinds of stuff. This one here says lines, dots, and dagger strokes. So again, a lot of fun stuff over there. Just some really cool airbrush sayings that you can get on all different kinds of merchandise. Anything you buy there will go to help benefit the airbrush garage and help keep this channel going. So I really appreciate your support. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I got my Awada Eclipse here, HPCS. It's a 0.35 needle nozzle combination. It's a middle of the road type of airbrush. It's not really expensive. It's under $200. So I really do recommend this airbrush for anybody getting started. But if you could afford this particular gun, promise me, you will have this gun for your entire airbrushing career. I've had it from the beginning of mine and I'm still using it. I always like to do my videos with these middle of the road brushes just because I'd like to show everybody watching the video that you don't need you know, a $500 Micron which I do love my Micron, but it took me 20 years to get that. And this is the brush I learned on. It's a brush I use all the time that you really don't need a $500 airbrush to achieve really great results with an airbrush. So with that said, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a couple of different uh, techniques for shading. So I'm going to assume everybody that's watching this video already knows that this Eclipse or whatever airbrush you're using is hopefully is a dual action airbrush where it's down for air and back for paint. Now that's going to be important here because when you are doing shading or actually any type of painting, I don't care whether it's with this airbrush or a spray can even, you don't want to keep the paint on when you stop the airbrush and then come back. Where you stop the airbrush, you're going to get a large volume of paint. And let me explain. Or let me show you. So I'm going to go air on and I'm going to paint down. And then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to come back. I didn't take off the paint. As you can see right here, you got a big blob of paint. You don't want to do that. So when you're spraying, before you can even learn shading, you have to learn some trigger control where it's going to be, you want to start moving the airbrush as soon as you put the paint or pull the paint back. And then as you're moving, okay, you want to take the paint off. You want to Push forward, but leave the air on. Okay, you want air on all the time, but you want to push forward to shut the paint off while the airbrush is still moving, just like this. Air on, paint off, and keep moving. That's what happens when your needle's not all the way forward. All right, so you get the idea here, okay? Again, air, paint, off, and keep moving. Air, paint, off, keep moving, okay? So now you're going to go back and forth. So I'm going to go air on, paint, off, and back. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth like that. And you can see I'm shutting the paint off at the end. The airbrush keeps moving. And the air stays on all the time. So that's the first thing you're going to want to learn so you can do some shading. You really don't want to take, if you're trying to shade, is paint a line, then shut, up, shut the air off, and then come back and paint another line. I mean, you can do that, but you're not going to get the results as if you keep the air on all the time and just move that paint trigger back and forth. So that's what you want to get used to. You want it down and back for paint forward to stop it but you want to keep the air on and the brush moving otherwise you're going to get this and you really don't want that 
So now I turn the page upside down, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a gradient shade right here. Okay. What I mean by that, we're going to go from dark to light. Now, again, the key here is you're going to keep the air on all the time, and you're going to use your trigger control. Now, I know you could say, well, you can keep the paint on. You can cheat a little bit. You can keep the paint on when you go off the page. You never have to take the paint off. You don't want to do that because you want to develop good muscle memory control with that finger. So you want a good uh, trigger finger. So here we go. Air on. I'm going to start painting now. The other rule that I forgot to mention is the 50% rule. You want to, when you lay down some paint, now I'm about four or five inches away. If you move back a little bit more, put the paint fully on, you get a nice big broad strip of paint. Now, what I want to do is I want to take and I want to go 50% or half of what that strip was. Okay, so I want to maintain the same distance. Air on. I want to pull back again all the way. And I want to overlap 50%. If I don't overlap 50%, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get dark, light, dark. So you don't want that. That's why, you know, even if you're watching some automotive sprayers, you know, with the bigger guns, the 50% rule applies to get good, consistent coverage. So I'm going to flip the paper around here. The other thing I want to mention is when you're airbrushing, I like to stabilize my airbrush with my left hand. I'm right-handed, so I got my right hand on my trigger, holding my airbrush, and then I like to stabilize my airbrush. When you're going back and forth, you don't want to be using your wrist and going like this. You want to hold this airbrush. 90 degrees to your work surface as much as possible and you want to move your arms so the airbrush maintains that 90 degrees as best as possible if you start using your wrists you can see that the airbrush is going to have different distances from your page i want to be able to control the distance in and out but i want to keep it at a 90 so i get that consistent pattern that's coming out because if you were to spray a dot like that, and you're 90 degrees, if I was to turn it on an angle, that's what you get. So you can see why you want to keep it at 90 degrees, because you will not achieve the results that you're looking for. So a couple of things you got to develop. You got to develop the memory or muscle memory of keeping your airbrush at a 90 degrees to the surface, and you got to develop that muscle memory with that finger for your trigger. Let's spray a gradient fade here. Again, we're going to go from dark to light. We're going to use the 50% rule. I'm about six inches away from my surface. And that's a nice gradient shade. So I'm using the 50% rule, and what I'm doing there also is I'm bringing the airbrush. I started about four inches, and as I was wanting to do less, and I was getting broader, I start bringing the airbrush back on the passes. Again, shutting the paint off through every pass. The next thing I want to show you is a different technique of shading, and it's using a stencil. So I got a nice straight edge here, and I could do this with a piece of paper. I'm just showing you with a small stencil here because... A you know, more rigid piece of plastic than a piece of paper is a lot easier to do this with. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can have and put your stencil down and you spray right over top of the line. And again, let's do the 50% thing. Okay. Or you can go for a soft edge where you hold this. I'm going to do it this way if I could. You hold it off the surface. And I'm about an inch off the surface. You see how I don't have that hard edge? It gives me a soft edge by holding that off the surface. But yet, 
keeps all the paint from coming over here. So that's just a little bit of a stencil technique with shading. All right, so now one last shading technique before you wrap it up here. And what I have here is I have a circle stencil underneath all of this paper. Again, for those of you who have not seen my videos before, I have a metal backer board here. I love to use the magnets. You know, you'll see other people taping the whole stencil off. I just find it easier to have a scrap tablet of paper around. I can pull the paper off, throw a couple magnets on it, and I'm good to go. So what I want to show you next is when you're shading something like a circle, a sphere, a cylinder, a triangle, it doesn't really matter. It's all basically the same technique. If I just took this airbrush and I colored in the whole circle solid, it's just going to be a flat 2D solid circle. And maybe that's what you want. But if you want to shade the circle where, you know, you actually have, say, a light source coming in, and we'll have the light source coming in from here. Okay, so we're going to leave that a lot brighter than we are going to be on the shadow side of where this would be now. The other thing is, you see I'm going to be spraying mostly on the paper. Again, for those of you who saw my videos before, it's called a bounce technique. You're letting the paint basically bounce off of the stencil that you're using and onto your surface. So you're basically, what you're trying to do is control the overspray. So I'm going to spray mostly on my surface. Again, I want it to be darker on his side. Now, it's amazing where this paint is actually getting to right now. It's actually getting over here. It, you really can't see it right now, but if I was to take the stencil off right now, you'd see that whole circle or the outline. Even though I'm only painting over here, that overspray will travel. And that's why it's really important, as you see here, you can't have enough masking, in my opinion, uh, when you're doing something like this where you don't want to get the paint anywhere else because the overspray will get in places where you don't want it. So again, lightly... We're using trigger control. Every time you see me going back and forth, I'm shutting the paint off. Paint goes on, paint goes off, paint goes on, paint goes off. So let's see what we got. So there you have it. It's as simple as that. A little shading technique. You got your light coming in here. Again, paint on, paint off. Every pass you see me making, when I'm done with that line, that paint is off, the airbrush is still moving. So important when you're doing your shading, lines, whatever it may be. Well, all right, there you have it. Hopefully you got something from this video. And hopefully the takeaway is that again, you gotta start with the basics, learn your basics, get your muscle memory control. It's really gonna help out in the long run. You'll find learning the basics will accelerate you a lot quicker. For people who know me, I have a saying that I always use, and I say, sometimes you got to go slow to go fast. So with that, if you like this type of content, you guys know the drill. Consider subscribing. Check out that store. Thumbs up. It all really helps. We're growing. And it's because of you guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. With that, we'll see you in the next video.